good morning neighbors so as you can see from the floor layout here I've got my laptop up and I've got a fresh page and I'm going to use a drawing application here in a moment and you'll see how poor a an artist I am So what this is going to be is a presentation of waveforms. And what waveforms mean. So a lot of ways of thinking about a wave is going to the beach and watching the waves come in and noticing they're rolling from the east one day and from the west another day. And the shape of the waves changes, the distance between the waves changes. So those are ocean wave patterns. Um, it's kind of a mechanical thing, I'd say. You can see the waves, they'll knock you over. So we're seeing the wave motion visibly, but it is a mechanical action. So alrighty then, just we're thinking about waves now and what waves do. Let's go to the graphics package. So this one, this one is for conversation's sake. This is ground. All right. Ground's usually represented on an electronics diagram something like that. So this symbol right here specifically means an earth ground. If the ground symbol was drawn like this, uh, what's the symbol I'm looking for? There is a neutral termination, and I'll get to that. So this is ground. This is earth ground. Let's draw this as a long line. All right. This graphics package on this laptop is shaky at best. So this is ground. This is the earth we walk on. And there's other symbols that could be termed ground. But I've got this something. I'm looking with an oscilloscope at something. And I see a waveform like this. All right. So again, my graphics package, and I come along four counts. Let's go four. Four counts, and I have, I see a next waveform. Come along four more counts. I see the next waveform. <laughs> So, what am I seeing here? Well, I mentioned I'm on an oscilloscope. So, just looking at the oscilloscope face without knowing what it's connected to, I can look at the screen and just quick analysis, say I'm seeing a pulsed output that's some level above ground. Because somewhere, somebody identified ground. I know that oscilloscope is doing a voltage measurement peak to peak, right? So this is the top of the waveform. Whatever that amplitude is on the oscilloscope, oscilloscope scale is the peak voltage, right? Peak voltage. 
ground. I look at the graduations on my oscilloscope and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten point, uh, let's say that's a point three. Which is good. That's a number I'm going to work with here. Um, these are examples. These are relative to real life. <laughs> so the first thing I've seen is this peak wave peak form, right? Um, I'm looking at a laptop oscilloscope here. And I've got, on my, just looking at the scale here, I'm looking at a peak of 10.3. Now I might have a knob over here somewhere that I have to set. Or a new scope could have a button that I have to push to do an auto range feature. So it will automatically scale what I see into the window, right? And then down here it might say 10.3. Because that's what I read using the graticules on the screen, right? These lines on a screen are called graticules. I got this 10.3 number, but over here on my oscilloscope scale or on my volt scale reading, because it's automatic now, we've gone high tech. <laughs> I've got a little thing here that says uh, 10.3 MV. Okay. So I already boogered up here, but I'm going to work with this. I made some just I made the math harder so if you see me change the numbers it's because um, I can't use a backspace on this particular laptop so anyway I've seen this peak is 10.3 milli megavolts right mega is uh, right comma one two three four five six right Thousands, millions, hundreds, thousands, millions. So we're here at 10.3 megavolties on a peak amplitude here. So you could say if this was an oscilloscope waveform, if it was a waveform, instead of these peak amplitudes, right, a waveform would look like this. Oops, I boogered up. Backspace. It looks something like that. So it would have that circular path instead of a square path, right? So this would be, these are called a sine wave versus a square wave. So that pulse is 10.3 megavolts. I'm just going to fudge some numbers here to make the conversation easier. So what's inside this peak? This peak is a pulsed output, right? I've got these pulses at some, this is time. I've got these pulses occurring at consistent instances, right? Every fifth one is a, is a pulse. And I didn't look at the time scale here, but this is T0, and all of a sudden I see a pulse, right? In this case, in my mind's example, this pulse at 10.3 megavolts is going to go to a klystron for a radar set. So now we're talking way cool stuff. This, this might be in uh, megahertz frequency range. So the, the occurrence of this pulse is every so many often's here. I haven't done the scale, but if I go look at this pulse, inside this pulse, and I take just one of these out and look at it, this pulse actually is a massive sine wave. Right. Again, with a better graphics package, I'm sure this would look something different, right? But there was a day when all this was done at drafting tables 
and before calculators you use slide rules or you just knew what the hell you were doing and so what I did is and this goes out like this for a long ways because now I'm still looking at this same oscilloscope but I changed the time scale instead of looking at this megahertz frequency I tuned in and I'm looking inside this wave right here and inside that wave is a gigahertz frequency so this huge DC pulse is built in some type of pulse forming network off to the left of this is a huge generator set that is powering a set of transformers and capacitors in something called a pulse forming network that's building this super high energy pulse you come in to to actually peak power or peak amplitude in a gigawatt gigavolts right and peak power of this one little peak here is in the megawatts so again I'm kind of noodling with numbers here because I should have done you know written a presentation out but I'm working for this off of brain strain for practice and to see if it makes any sense so this huge DC pulse is built up on a capacitor bank to millions of volts a huge type of discharge circuit discharges that million volt pulse into a cavity makes a specific waveform frequency so that gets dumps a bunch of power in a can basically the can resonates and creates this high frequency pulse that's going to come out of a waveguide and it's going to shoot off into the atmosphere and reflect off of things and it reflects off of everything but it's a matter of how much so what you've got here is a very quick introduction to radar 101 on a custom laptop um, built upon generations of knowledge so where do you get this stuff you sit through for me it was 1100 hours of what most people would consider um, Oh, I guess electronics but to get this far to get this close to it you're in the realm of physics because physics describes everything I'm speaking to here in the back of all of this are masses of equations that work so the equations describe what we should see if we don't see that we have to find out why which could be the pulse it could be the klystron it could be the waveguide it could be a whole lot of things out there in the physical world that we know about or the equation mischaracterizes what's happening and again we need to find out why it could be a measurement instrument issue I mentioned that the probe that I'm using is a it's a super high voltage probe actually I didn't mention that the oscilloscope that's touching this circuitry has it they're expensive the scope and the probe because you're out in gigahertz here when you go into these gigahertz thingies you're trying to look at these super fast waveforms inside of these waveforms so now you're very high in the frequency range 
which is a whole nother conversation and material off the internet that one of these days I might get to. But back to the laptop presentation here. So I've got these pulses exactly timed. And I, I mean exactly. We're, we are to, um, let's say, minus about an hour, maybe at minus 12 to minus 18 digits. D I G I T S of resolution. All right, that resolution thing I'm talking to is yesterday we could see this pulse. We could build this equipment. We could very well measure from this leading edge of the pulse to this leading edge of a pulse. All right. So we can measure the beginning and end of a pulse. We can measure the time between pulses. Okay, so I've got a one wide pulse. I've got four Use seconds here, four seconds of duration. A one inch pulse, another four seconds. And this is exact. This is precise out to these levels of precision. The reason we know that is the physics and testing the physics against the reality of what our instruments are capable of seeing. So now if I know my instrument can see these megahertz, I can look at this pulse with this instrument. If this instrument can't see gigahertz, I'm never going to get the details of these pulses. So now I have a pulse. I can look at Doppler effects, right? Doppler effects are frequency shifts, the red shift, blue shift conversation out in the universe. I can look at the shifts in the timing of these leading edges. So when you think Doppler, you're thinking of this circular wave coming back. This hard pulse went out, hit something, and bounced back. So right way down here, down in the dust, I get a little echo back from something off in the distance. Way off here, I get a little something back. Way off in the distance. And a little something here. I'm off the end of this waveform. I've come out another, oh, it's not four seconds. I see a micro pulse come back at at T3. It's consistent now, right? I've seen this, but at T4, I've got my huge pulse, the pulse out the waveguide. So remember, this waveform is pulsing a klystron generating a radar wave and sending it out a waveguide on an antenna that's pointed in a certain direction and when it bounces back I see something so now I go out and I look or I ask a pilot and I say hey what's out there or I send a, a scout out to look and say hey what's out there and when that antenna sweeps by a specific area, I get a big echo back from something. So what is it? I don't know, but I can see on my oscilloscope. I haven't even looked out the window. I can see on my oscilloscope that there's something there and it's consistent. I know my whole functioning system is a radar set. So this has to be a reflection of something. And my antenna is spinning around on the radar. So this reflection over time, right, I'm, I'm supposing this reflection is from this signal. I really don't know. But this is my first guess. It is consistent, so I can say I've, I know I've got to chase this. If I just saw this once, I'm going to, eh, what was that? 
So if I see it twice, I see it three times, I see it a thousand from my radar set. There's a pulse there. I can go out and get the binoculars. I can send a guy on horseback out. He can tell me what is out there that might be sending this pulse back. Or like I said, I send a plane or a weather a balloon or whatever it is. I've verified that pulse. I've learned something that this pulse is giving me a reflection back. Because I have the time of that, I know the frequency of this, I know the atmosphere of what's around my radar. Right? I'm in the center here, I'm sweeping a signal out whoosh, around in a circle. I know the circle, I know the signal, blah blah, I got a reflection back. If that reflection happens right here every time, I know that somewhere in this radar line, I'm getting a reflection back. I'm seeing it back on my receiver for this radar set. I've got a pretty good idea where it is because I know where my antenna's pointing. So I've got a vector, right? That's all we have off of this. I now have a vector. I say, Chief, get on your horse and ride westward ho. Now let's call this eastward ho. So we got an eastward ho heading east looking for something out there and they go out and they say hey at 20 miles i've got a skyscraper sky whatever the spelling is right so i'm at my horse's guy has said da, 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 da. i rode his horse out saw the skyscraper out here oops that's me radar this is skyscraper big building nice place to live so I know my radar sees a skyscraper. I know it's at this vector. I know where I am, right? Because I'm at ground. And I know this building's at ground. So what's next on this? This waveform came back at three pulses. I know the frequency of it. Okay, frequency is directly related to time. F equals one over T. Now, I know how long it took that signal to go out and bounce off the building and come back to me. So this pulse went out. Big, wide pulse. Okay. Big, wide pulse goes out hits the building and sends just a little bit back to me. I see that just a little bit. So the travel time is the distance times two. So this distance, the amount of time it traveled, this frequency traveling at the speed of light to get back to me is twice the distance to the object. So now I can say that distance equals, what did I say? I'm gonna say these are miles, three miles. Um, no, I'm going to say these are, are 10 miles, so it comes out to 30 miles out. The building's 30 miles away, and my radar is picking up on it. So remember, I'm, just, I'm still sitting just at an oscilloscope. I know what it's attached to. I've had some soft conversations with people around me, so I'm beginning to learn what it can detect. And the first thing I've done is a base timing function against the pulse times, and I've seen that I get a reflection back. Now I'm looking at time of flight. The time it takes a particle or an energy form, right, because this is ionized, it's an ionized pulse travels basically to think of as a ball through the atmosphere, right? This, this pulse is a little ball that's expanding as it goes out. And when it hits something, it's going to reflect some little speck of itself back and you're radaring because you can time and get a distance. And if you know the direction of the antenna, now you have a distance and a vector. If this was moving, if the building could walk, right? Or if the radar set was on a vehicle and moving towards it, I could judge my own speed towards the building or the building's speed towards me 
by looking at the change in this time. So I'm looking at it here. It's at, it's at um, what I say, is it 10 mile segments? So this is 30 miles. This one was 31 miles. This one was 32. That is this thing, the building's running away from you, right? Because it, it, it's getting further away. At some point, if the building was running away from you, its reflection could theoretically get on the other side of the next pulse. It's going to become noise in the next pulse, right? This building gets out to 50 miles away now, or 60 miles. He's past the next pulse. So I might actually have a little pulse here and no pulse here. That would be the expected waveform after he's gone past if my reflex klystron <laughs> in the radar set is able to pick that up. So that's simple analysis off of the pulse and the pulse return. What else could I get off of this? This pulse also is going to have the same reaction. If this thing is moving, it is going to do a Doppler shift of this frequency as well. Right? So I can look, because I'm now able, I've got better resolution. I went from 10 digits to 13 digits, right? This is every one of these hops, megahertz to gigahertz, is a three-digit change in resolution. So I can see now, I can see into the top of this waveform. I said this, what we're looking at right here. is that and this actually is huge tall so I condense this amplitude to be able to look at the whole thing but I've got a frequency inside a frequency so here's where you stop a professor in any class and say well when I do this this is pulsed Doppler and few people mix those terms because the Doppler is, Doppler is is in your mind as an analysis of a waveform and waveforms continue but here I've just looked at pulses right and I've looked at a Doppler effect if that building was moving it's going to slightly shift the frequency and I can use that to see how fast the building's running away from me. Or I can just use this hard measurement I get on the reflection to see how fast. So I can come in here at this frequency and look for a Doppler shift in frequency. Or I can look just at pure timing using these pulses. So now I got his distance and his vector. What could this pulse tell me? If I can analyze this pulse, I might be able to tell by the phase shift if the plane can tell me, okay, it was a building. If the building is glass or concrete, it might reflect back differently. So if I have my radar, I can learn. I sent my scouts out because now I've got two of these blips. out here so I've got something I said these are 100 so that's 100 200 miles and then the second blip is at 300 miles my scout missed something but when I sent the scout out right I'm gonna do another radar ring I was here my radar is sweeping around this way and it saw a big tall building right here right so I sent my scat out this way. He found big, tall building. But this signal I'm looking at is just the pulses back. It's not related to, the, to where the antenna is located. When I go look at where I got this biggest signal back, because I have to look, I'm doing timing of these things, right? As this thing sweeps, I got a signal back here and I got a signal back here. 
So just from looking at this, because this doesn't account for where that radar is, all it's saying is what the radar is seeing right now, then there's more information I get when I add rotational information. So here I have a vector, right? And that's pretty much set, but here I have a sweep. Okay, which is going to add a third dimension onto this vector. So we're into vector analysis here. Yes, it gets a lot of math real quick. And we might ought to stop in a second here. And just, I need to see what this looks like. It's not meant to be pretty, it's meant to be kind of a presentation of what your mind goes through when you walk into a piece of equipment that you are familiar with and yet you might not have a clue or you might never have touched this but you've seen something like it so all right this is radar 101 actually this is about radar 601 somewhere um, this was kind of inspired by a two and a half hour presentation I watched yesterday that was specifically about, oh gosh, most specifically about six or seven specific um, areas of math in calculus mostly that cover these aspects that are all of the pieces you have to put together to understand radar as radar. I'm talking about one tiny little piece of how the internals of radar works, but you instantly get it. Once you know the mechanics of what you're looking at, with an oscilloscope, I'm looking at uh, voltage over time. So if the antenna's direction at this time was a little different than the antenna's direction at this time, the pulse is in a different location. For this second pulse that I would have I'm showing here in this one peak, I would have had to send my scout out um, if this is east. This is north. I should have sent the scout out east and northeast. And when the scout went east and found this building and came back northeast, he found another building right here. And he also said the building looked new. So I said I've got walking buildings in this uh, hypothetical mess. So the building just walked in, sat down, and squatted, just showed up on the radar. I already knew, because I'd already sent the scout out, that I had a building here that was slowly moving eastward, right? Now I know that there's two buildings out there. Um, so how am I assessing this? Well, in this case, I've got a close combat ground air support radar. This guy's sweeping very fast across the horizon. He's aimed low across the horizon, so these were top view, but also this is a side view of that radar signal. So I don't have this set aimed high up in the air. I've got this set aimed very low, so it's looking at the horizon, which changes how I'm going to tune the radar. I'm looking for reflectivity over a shorter distance, so I'm going to tune my radar. I'm looking at, I'm trying to get these pulses so they fit the airspace I'm trying to control. So while this Klystron side is kind of set, the timing of this frequency here is an impact on my resolution. If I tighten these beams up, I'm going to get more of this reflectivity. I'm going to lose inside these other signals. Anything that returns inside this, anything here from this signal that returns inside here is absolutely lost because of detector physics. And 
anything out here you have to be able to discern if it was this pulse or this pulse so what can you do about that that would be another uh, video inferring a whole bunch of other physics so what was that other video on the other video on was on um, oh wave propagation theory so I will put a tag to that in the link if this one gets posted otherwise thanks for listening this one was tough would have been much better scripted, so I'll see. First test.